Did it really happen? Did man really walk on the moon, just as Kennedy had challenged NASA to do? We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. The photos of Apollo 11 moon landing have been criticized as being too perfect and looking like they've been photographed inside a TV studio with spotlights. Bill Casing is an ex-Rocketdyne engineer who points out that there should be a blast crater underneath the lunar module, but there isn't. Award-winning filmmaker and photographer David Percy has written a book called Dark Moon which shows that the famous Apollo 11 photographs were all shot using multiple light sources, something which can't happen if the astronauts were really on the moon. Jim Collier, an American investigator, has pointed out that the lunar module was far too small for two astronauts in full spacesuits to maneuver around inside. Jim Collier also believes that some of the footage showing the lunar module blasting off from the moon's surface has been filmed using a rotating model, just like the special effects techniques Hollywood blockbusters use today. Now, for the first time on film, we present new evidence which proves that at least some of the official NASA photographs taken on the lunar surface are definitely faked, or at the very least, heavily manipulated. Join us now on a quest for the truth to the moon.
in this film, we shall not only prove beyond all reasonable doubt that many of the official NASA images of lunar exploration are fake, but we shall also examine the motives for the biggest lie put before the world. Why did NASA repeatedly fake lunar images and photographs? Why did NASA stage lunar expeditions which did not happen? The answer will surprise you. It can be summarized in just two words, money and UFOs. But before we look at the motives for lying on such a vast scale, let's look at where some NASA scientists came from. Pienemunde, Nazi Germany. For centuries, warmongering nations had been using primitive rockets as a weapon of war. China, Britain, and of course Hitler's Third Reich all used rockets to terrorize their enemies. Werner von Braun was an SS officer and rocket scientist. His team at Peenemunde designed the first cruise missile, the V-1 Doodlebug. The V-2 rocket was the forerunner to the Saturn V rocket, which would supposedly take man to the moon. At the end of World War II, the American government were desperate to get hold of the Nazi rocket weapons, which had wrought havoc on the innocent people of Britain. The American government launched Project Paperclip, which secretly changed the war criminal files on Werner von Braun and his colleagues. Files which described these SS officers as an ardent Nazi were changed to read not an ardent Nazi. Werner von Braun, his team and the rocket factory at Peenemunde, which had terrorized Western Europe, was transported to the USA lock, stock and barrel. It soon became clear that the Nazis had a secret space program at Peenemunde and Nordhausen. The Hanabu craft utilized alternative propulsion systems such as Vril power, possibly back engineered from recovered crashed flying saucers. Prescott Bush was the grandfather of today's George W. Bush. Whilst working with the Bank of America, and the Jewish Warburg brothers in Wall Street. Prescott Bush helped arrange vast loans to the Third Reich. The Third Reich space scientists used Jewish prisoners as slaves to build gigantic underground bases and manufacture the V-2 rocket which would terrorize Europe during 1944 
and 1945. At Nordhausen and other sites in Germany and Austria, Werner von Braun and his team of Nazi SS engineers built vast laboratories and rocket factories. The interior of an entire mountain was excavated to accommodate a secret space facility which was no less than one million square feet. It was here at Nordhausen, in top secret underground bases, that a huge number of experimental rocket ships and circular flying disks were developed. The prototype V-7 craft was powered by engines manufactured by BMW. The V-7 used 12 BMW 028 engines which were powered with helium. Radical fuselage shapes were developed which would later lead to the emergence of stealth aircraft and the cruise missile. Werner von Braun and his team closely studied photographs of UFOs which had been photographed in Germany, Austria, Switzerland and Russia. These unidentified flying objects inspired the development of Nazi flying discs. After World War II, 
the underground base at Nordhausen was rebuilt in the Mojave Desert, a place we now know as Area 51. A tremendous sighting took place, and we, I'm just completely baffled right now. Uh, so is uh, Mr. Anthony Hilder. Example of one of the many objects seen regularly in Las Vegas, a um, very bright object just uh, basically hovering over Las Vegas, um, 5.30 p.m. Um, cylindrical uh, object, a craft. We believe it could be some kind of an observation uh, uh, platform. volume of evidence is that the space program that appears on the television news uh, and has done these last few decades is actually only there as a, um, uh, a movie to um, hide the real program um, which is um, actually uh, uh, exploring things that uh, these guys already know are there. There's this secret agenda in which um, advanced knowledge that people uh, in general never hear is passed on to the chosen ones that um, are chosen to have this information and to move it through the generations. Uh, the agenda for centralized control and all that stuff. Um, and then there's the movie which is there to hide all that and the movie is the official version of events that pours out the television. I've said in my latest book um, uh, Tales from the Time Loop that um, we're looking at the Fourth Reich, and then I put under that brackets or a continuation of the Third, which never ended. People have no idea in the general population because no one tells them of the fundamental connections between the Nazis. The people now think, oh yeah, the Nazis are gone, and the American administration. First of all, um, the Nazis were funded uh, out of Britain and America. Um, why is it that they were taking their wages home in wheelbarrows during the Weimar Republic? Germany was in economic catastrophe. A few short years later, they have a war machine that's taking on the world. How did this come about? Anyone ask? Um, well, let's, uh, let's ask the Bush family. Because, um, and this is not just me, other researchers have come up with this, and a guy called John Loftus, who is the, uh, he runs the Holocaust Museum in Florida, that um, Prescott Bush, who is the grandfather of the present president, um, he was a major executive of the Harriman Empire in America. And they had a company called the Union Banking Corporation, the UBC, which interfaced with the uh, banking and uh, steel empire in Europe of a guy called Fritz Tyson, who was named at places like the Nuremberg Trial and elsewhere as a major funder of Adolf Hitler and the Nazis. And what Prescott Bush, who was, who was the key executive in the Union Banking Corporation, was doing was funneling money and other resources through the UBC into Tyson's empire, and then it went to the, to the Nazis, and that's where the war machine came from, also through the Bank of England. Only yesterday, every business, every profession was part of Hitler's system. The doctors, technicians, clockmakers, postmen. Practically every German was part of the Nazi network. They believe they were born to be masters, that we are inferiors, designed to be their slaves. Um, a number of companies in which Prescott Bush was involved in uh, were closed down during the Second World War under the Trading with the Enemies Act. Um, William S. Farish, whose grandson is now Bush's ambassador to uh, Britain, William S. Farish III, a uh, very close friend and uh, horse interbreeder with the Queen of England. Um, his grandfather, um, uh, William S. Farish, uh, was president of Standard Oil, the Rockefeller Oil Company, when it was um, exposed as supplying the Nazis with oil during the Second World War, while you know, they were supposedly in conflict with America. 
And so what you had then was this um, uh, CIA, British intelligence operation, called Project Paperclip, which was to get the Nazis, the major Nazis, with all, and, and a lot that w with tremendous knowledge that are not uh, registered by history, out of Germany, so they would be safe, and into South America and North America, to continue this agenda um, up to the present day. And so this is why you have Nazi after Nazi turning up as founders of, of, and creators of NASA and all these other institutions, the CIA, that appeared immediately after the Second World War.